the total, the whole pace of the game would be different. Actually, not the storm. I mean, the TA in the mm. middle lane early. So, it's gonna depend. It's very similar. The Chen and the CM will be trying to do the same thing: jungle and try to maybe make a rotation early to try and secure an advantage for either of the lanes. So, I would say the focus will be the Chen versus the CM. Who gets the first rotation successfully and gets a key pick off. All right, so we're going to go into the game here, pull down the last hit tonight chart for you guys, do the introduction as uh, Ehome versus Secret. Game two gets underway. Secret looking to lock this out in a 2-0. Ehome needs to extend it to the three to make sure that they have a chance to advance. For Team Secret on the dire side, we're going to have Arteezy playing the TA. We're going to have Kuroki on his signature Rubik. We're going to have Zai playing the Undying S4 on the Storm Spirit with a heck of a lot of regen. And Puppy will be playing that jungle. Chen. Looks like they're all going to head towards the same room. So just like last time, looks like we might have some conflict. ROTK going to lead the charge to the high ground. Going to run into Zai. Sees him. Starts the chase. Comes in the back. Lanham wants to come out. Starts the damage. And Zai looking to get out of there. But the cogs come down. And this is going to be the first blood. Down goes Zai. S4 the puts some damage on ROTK. Story. They're not the walking story. away though. The fight continues. ROTK has to back away. He can't stay in that deep. S4 just going to zone everyone out, and they're basically just keeping them away from the rune. Puppy already at half health. S4 going to be forced to fall back with the rest of Team Secret as Ehome plays this very, very yeah, aggressively. Yeah, they really want to get the wards down against the Chen. That was like... They were mm -hmm. trying to push them away so they couldn't have vision where they are placing the wards. The CM has all the wards there. So he's going to drop a sentry to block the camp. And this ward here, I'm, I think it's not going to block anything, but it's just primarily going to give vision of the, the whereabouts of the Chen, which is important for them. Makes sense, but hey, a good first kill for Ehome. Like you said, just like the last game, Ehome comes in, gets off to a very good start. That didn't really pan out for them at the end of the day, but uh, a great start for them. And like you said, a great zoning out to get those wards in to place yeah. for Ehome to try and slow Chen down. But that's the downside of that engagement because the CM was... He took Crystal Nova. Mm -hmm. I mean, she took Crystal Nova, yeah. so she can't really jungle right now. So has to go to the lane. That's the downside of getting Absolutely. the first bird. But Puppy is going to be able to take away this sentry, but not before the 30 second mark. So he's not going to get a camp spawn there. Has to move over. So that's Golems and Centaurs. And there's no Harpy. So that's good news for the Queen of Pain. All right, let's do a quick introduction for Ehome now that we have the lane sort of balanced out. Uh, for Team Ehome, we have ROTK in the off lane playing that clockwork. We're going to have CTY playing the quap over in the mid. Down on the bottom, it's going to be Lanham on the Crystal Maiden. We're going to have DDC on the Ancient apparition and last but not least yj on the drow yeah, range now look towards top lane where they're moving in on rotk he's picked up thrown down comes in with the stuns right clicks are there centaur putting in some work rotk gets the cogs out but so goes he back to base as he ends up getting taken out so a nice kill rotation by secret getting that early centaur really paying off for him they saw they actually saw the chen with the centaur moving up though with the wall there. Oh, I'm gonna take interrupt you as we go down to the bottom where Zai puts down the tombstone to try to escape. Rotation by Lanham comes in, gets the slow, but it's not enough. And Undying escapes with less than 30 HP, pops the salve and comes right back in to soak that XP. Almost a kill, but not quite. Yeah, I was talking about the last kill where they got on the clock. The ward actually saw the chen getting a centaur, and the ward even saw mm. the chen moving towards the lane so maybe he was just a bit too cocky that he thinks that he would be able to escape with the power cocks but apparently not with the lift into the center slot he wasn't able to get up all right so that puts us at a one for one as we look at the top lane uh which which lane do you think is gonna be the most important here to keep an eye on like who which lane really needs to come out ahead for these teams um, I think the secret lineup, the storm would be their, I would say, tempo control. So if he gets a good start, he'll be able to dictate, dictate play for secret. And for E Home, I think the Queen of Pain would be their most important lane that they need to make sure it goes well for them. Because she again will be moving around the map, setting up kills with her spells, with her high damage spells. So these are the two key lanes for both the teams. All right, so CTY taking some harass as he goes head-to-head -head with the TA here. Comes, here. here comes the CM with the smoke into its middle. Not sure if she's going to be able to get a kill, but TA doesn't have enough mana for a refraction. Mm. She's like five mana short. Oh, she's going to get it now at the bottle. Got so that bottle. this kill is going to be difficult. Not easy. So Crystal Maiden is going to come there. We got Lanham on the rotation. Sees. It looks like they see the bottle coming out. Is he yeah. still going to go for this? Maybe. 
There's, there's a good chance they might get it too. They've got the position move to go on Arteezy, starting to burn through the refraction charges. DTY looks for position, out comes Lanham, goes in, gets the frostbite, damage is there, Arteezy dropping pretty low. Can they finish the job? They do, so a good kill, and Arteezy goes down in the mid, and CTY, uh, like you said, needs to get a good start, and that's a great way to do it. Yeah, and having the sentry that was so important for the Queen of Pain. Otherwise, because Artis can melt at the, right at the end of it, otherwise they wouldn't have landed the last two auto attacks. So ROTK that was a really big kill. Again, on the top lane, man. ROTK having a tough go of things right now. That's, That's considering he that he got the first blood though. He even got the first sure. blood before everything started. But he's still in a lot of trouble because as I talk about, the Rubik is a really good way of dealing with the uh, power cocks clockwork at the start of the game during the laning phase. So he's going to be constantly under huge pressure from the telekinesis. Right, so let's take a look at the CS right now. Drow 21 and 3, 19 and 10 for the Queen of Pain, uh, doing pretty well. Looks like uh, DDC goes ahead, gets the illusion re uh, rune down on the bottom, and uh, Quap winning the lane at the moment, but not by a whole lot. Is uh, well, I guess a pretty good amount. It's it's actually, a pretty, yeah, a pretty yeah, I would say 11 and 4. That's 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 actually not great at all. Yeah, the draw aura, the draw aura plus the CM aura that's just came into play and the gank before. So, I mean, it's understandable why Queen of Pain has a sizable amount of lead over the Templar assassin mm -hmm. right now. Now Zai is getting harassed pretty hard here on the bottom lane. He's had a tough go. He's four and zero, sitting at a level two. As the guys on the bottom have been working very hard to box him out. Level four draw ranger, uh, DDC doing a good job of just rotating around and making sure anytime Zai comes in, he's paying a damage price for it. Gold slightly in Ehome's favor, XP is as well, but nothing really to write home about. Still a very even game at 2-2. Two two. But once again, uh, Secret doing a good job of getting a, having a tough start and then just making sure that they bounce right back and get into this. Let's check in on Puppy, who is currently level 4, has a good-sized army, and is just working this jungle uh, with no real issues. So the next play coming out from Secret is the, going to be the level 6 on the Storm here. He's going to probably get a teleport scroll once he pops level 6 and Undying will play very aggressive at the bottom lane so they can make use of the Tombstone plus the Storm teleporting in to get return kills. So that will be mostly what Secret is looking to do as soon as the Storm gets his uh, ultimate up online. All right, so we'll check in with, uh, let's look at some items, see if there's any good farm coming out. We do have the boots finished up on Draw Ranger. YJ getting a really good uh, early game go on this. 34 and 15 is net worth third on the list as we see Storm Spirit and Quap just a little bit ahead of him. Quap well, uh, was level six already, by the way. He just popped level six. Oh, good. So let's, uh, we'll keep an eye on him. His ROTK looks like he wants to get aggressive with that. Gonna circle around, try to find Poppy in the jungle. Does find his creeps. And I'll go ahead and try to hit them a little bit, slow them down. CTY comes in, gets the one. They're going to skip the second. Here comes the TP. Here comes the stomp. Here they come. Arteezy wants to come in, starts putting work on ROTK. They're coming from the back. CTY's going to try to get away, picks up, throws down. ROTK finds himself in a tough position again. Cogs out, but he gets S4 inside with him. There comes the scream. Guap in very, very deep, manages to finish off the Storm Spirit and gets herself out. Dirge also went down. So uh, that ends up, we lost what? Dirge on the bottom there. So a one for two across the map. Did they get a solo kill on the Dutch? I the believe that they did, yeah. Yeah, it was a solo kill. So all in all, I would say good exchange for Ehome. They got the Storm plus the Dutch. Uh, and they gave away only one clockwork. Mm -hmm. And a clockwork who's had a rough start anyway, so he's uh, really not sitting any farther back than I think he already has been at this point. He's still sitting on those brown boots. Level 6, not really paying off dividends just yet, but he's not interested in staying in one place as he heads down towards the bottom lane uh, to try and get a little bit of action underway. Yeah, they have quite a sizable creep wave here. They want to try and push a tower with the siege that creep, and mostly, most likely they're going to be able to get it. I'm checking on TPs again. Storm has TP up. Um, Rubik has TP, so they have two heroes with teleport scrolls to even the TA, but TA doesn't have HP, so they are not going to be able to defend this tower. So the tower will go down, and uh, marks a pretty early push by Ehome, something that we're not uh, really able to accomplish in the last game, so it's getting a little bit faster this time around. Land on level 4 does have those Tranquil Boots up and running, DDC is still sitting on brown, and YJ has picked up that Morbid Mask. Zai is having a really hard time sticking around here. Yeah, it's not an easy lane for him. Draw off laners against Draw Ranger is a pretty 
pretty pretty hard lane for you to just get experience, especially when they decide to get uh, force arrows as well. It's very difficult to get a level there. And they're gonna get uh, the double damage rune on top on RTZ. Mm -hmm. The Queen of Pain didn't manage to snag it, so she's forced to go back to base to regen. So she will head back. Artiz does a good job of blocking her off from getting it, not willing to stick around and take too big of a risk in and that position. Here we, here we go. Secret is going to make their first smoke movement with the Rubik and the Chen. Uh, Chen is level 6 as well, so doesn't have the boots, but has the ultimate to make sure that his teammates will get that boost of HP. So where are they going to look forward to go? Into the jungle and try to help out Zai here. Try to get a kill or two. Looks like they're considering going towards that mid, rolling up towards the tower. We got CTY in the dead in a dangerous position. Gets picked up, throw down, stun is there, centaur in place. Hookshot comes out, but she gets back to safety. So Quap able to blink away. Cogs come out from ROTK to buy a little bit of space, and the Chen army locked out of the engagement. So the smoke comes to Nop, but the chase continues. ROTK in very deep. S4 way back there actually gets picked off. Arteezy now overexposed. ROTK in the front line. They get him down. Nice play by CTY returns with almost no HP and uh, Eom gets the double off of the secret smoke. Yeah, they were just kind of over committing to that uh, after the Queen of Pain managed to get away mm -hmm. thanks to Mr. ROTK with his hookshot buying some time so that he can actually stick up and just blink away otherwise he would probably have died in that fight just secret Dyer's they were over, com over committing for that fight which is something Dyer's that we have I think this is the first over commitment we saw from them from the past couple of the day couple of games yesterday fallen. and the day before all right so we do see that mid tower go down ehome accomplishing their goal which is to just keep the aggression up they take both towers out very very quickly before the 10 minute mark is this i mean is this going the way that ehome wants it to is it moving fast enough and what does secret do to try to counter it uh, that was actually a moment where uh, cty is going to get lifted into uh -oh. the sand box picked up thrown back Kuroki gets up the telekinesis cty exposed candy gets a safety wow. blink is up in five seconds he will manage to get away uh, that Gus just Radiant's managed to buy tower. some extra time attack. for him to get away there. But the last fight, Zai wasn't present in the middle lane. I, I think that's why they, they mm -hmm. weren't fighting with the full team. So they lost the fight and they have to get levels up on the Undying ASAP. He's still level 5 now, doesn't have his ulti or the max level tombstone yet. All right, so back to the idea of secret in this game. Is, uh, are they where they want to be? It's They're down 3.5k uh, gold. They're down 1,500 XP. What is their play to kind of make sure that Ehome doesn't start to run away with this push? Um, they would, I think the next thing was to try and get like level 7. is crucial on the Undying mm -hmm. so that they can actually go fight with his Tombstone. As far could be in some trouble up on top? No, he's going to get away. No problem. And Cloudwood just manages to, he just wanted to scout out the Ancients, whether they're stacked for the TA as well. So, they are making, Ehom is making sure they are checking everything. Once they see there's no Ancients, they're going to start to group up and try to take down more towers here. Like, because they are feeling that they are having the advantage now, after winning the last fight. S4 on standby, looks like he's watching, waiting for his chance to potentially initiate good wards here to keep an eye on things they, uh... We'll go ahead by Dyer to make sure that they get rid of that push ward. So down it goes, and Ehome is now going to have to be pushing blind. Four-man rotation up towards the stop, top to stop the push. Arteezy, meanwhile, only interested in they're getting his smoke. farm back on track. They're going to smoke to Rosha, maybe, or they're going to run behind. This is interesting. Whether they're going to go for Rosh or they're just on it. They're going to run into the jungle and try to find a good angle to pick out someone. Uh, who are they going to run into? I think they see the storm. So there's going to be Storm. Storm makes a jump and immediately goes to the high ground and dodges the hook shot as well as the silence. So a nice play by Storm to get himself out of what could have been a very sticky situation. ROTK and Latam immediately rotate away. So Smoke does come to not. Smokes haven't really worked out in this game so far. Uh, both teams kind of finding and then getting finding mobile heroes, I should say, with those smokes and just not working out. They want to go straight into the rush with the Draw Ranger. There's no TA traps on the rush, so Secret doesn't know. So they will go down. Secret going to go ahead and push that top tower while they slip into the Roche pit. We do see some pings on the Roche, but no rotations yet by Team Secret. Roche already down at half. Looks like it's not going to be a contest. Ehome should get this without too much trouble. Meanwhile, the top tower push is petered out. They're worried about a possible engagement. Yeah, Secret they, backs away. They were worried. It was a really smart move by Ehome. They smoked and uh, they didn't get anything, and they immediately moved four heroes into the Roche pit. And the AA sent an ice box on top. So Secret was thinking. 
thinking like the the rest of the E home squad might be coming top because mm -hmm. the Ice Blast came top and they didn't expect the Roshan. And obviously not having the TH right back, so they didn't have the vision to know what E home was doing in the Rosh pit. So smart play by Eno. More importantly, a really great play in the sense of they got the Aegis and did not lose any towers for their yeah, trouble. So they come out way a, ahead. That was like a free, <laughs> a free Roshan for them, and not giving away anything in, in exchange, like you mentioned. And that will take the gold lead to Ehome almost to 5,000 XP at three, and they're actually in a really strong position in this match compared uh, to S4. where they S4 were S4 last time around. See the A. Is he gonna go for the pickoff? No. But they are definitely in a much, much better position compared to the last game yeah. after 10 minutes. So this is looking really good for Ehome. They're going to be able to take, I think, the next, uh, the tier 1 at top fairly easily as well. I don't think Siko will be able to contest it with the Aegis on their hand. <laughs> S4 and CTY play a little bit of chicken down there in the uh, jungle as they walk off in their own personal directions. Drow, 6.2k on her farm, getting a little bit scary because she's pulling pretty far ahead of that Storm Spirit at the moment. Oh, CTY. Oh, he... S4 didn't manage to chase the right direction. Otherwise, I think he would have... Yeah, he's definitely going to go down there if S4 chased the right direction. But so far, if you look at the next big item pickups will be the Orchid. Either on the Queen of... The Queen of Pain is closing on her Orchid first compared to the Storm Spirit. So it will be crucial. Top lane, they got the oh. Undying with the CM ulti. Missed that completely. He was watching S4 run around with the haste rune. Case one. <laughs> right? Alright, so YJ, ROTK, they bring up the whole crew with Ehome. They get a nice kill up on the top on the Undying. Uh, will that secure them the ability to try to push in and take this tower? YJ going to be out in front. Scott's the Yasha finished up. Looks like he's going to have a Sand after this tower goes down. And that'll be all the tier ones on the side of Secret. They are losing map control rapidly, which is not something that they're used to losing in this tournament so far. Yeah, they're, they're not going to be able to defend any of the towers with the Aegis on the Queen of Pain and Undying is really extremely weak right now for Secret. He's more of a support right now. He's not really a core because of the rough laning phase that he was forced to go through. So, I mean, he needs some time. He's going to be going for a first, first, first item for stuff against the Clockwork as well. So he's not that tanky in team fights. Right, let's take a look at what the farm's going for on Secret here. Puppy with the mech finished up and the brown boots. Uh, down the bottom lane, it looks like CTY is going to find S4. S4 is going to be forced to back away. Not interested in that engagement right now. CTY does have the first half of uh, that he's, Orchid online. Oblivion staff finished up. He's like uh, 400 short of his Orchid. So he's going to have it at 16, I would say. 16 mm. and a half minutes. So that's a pretty good timing for the Orchid. That's really quick. It's, uh, it about sets the pace for how this game's been going. Net worth yeah, continues to climb Storm. the way of secret. Storm is going to have a hard yes. time with this early orchid. Dyer's That's for sure. Tower. Absolutely. ROTK. They're going to find Dyer's the courier just sitting wow. at the at the secret shop, and they get a nice little gold buff for well, almost no work whatsoever. This there was nothing inside. Mm -hmm. Who was actually purchasing <laughs> items? <laughs> Not sure. Maybe the Chen was getting arcade boost. That's the Dyer's most likely Dyer's scenario. Dyer's because the rest of the heroes are not going to buy anything from them. Right. It's probably the Arcane Boots. Meanwhile, tier, tier 2 tower on the bottom goes down. ROTK on the rotation with the rest of his crew after they take out the Courier. Meanwhile, the secret jungle is jam-packed with heroes trying to get themselves back into this. We see the TP by Puppy cancelled out as RTZ goes yeah. and says, I'm going to farm up that bottom lane. This is the first time you see Secret having to group up as a lot as a team because they are very far behind. Usually, you are seeing that Secret are forcing the enemy teams to group up, but in this game, early game didn't go so well, and they had the Undying and Chen, so if the early game doesn't go well in a draft where you have Undying plus Chen, you're gonna have a hard time after that, so I don't think they can de even defend this tier 2. They still have the Aegis on the Queen of Pain. I think, yeah. It's gonna expire soon though, in another 30 seconds, is that right? 30 seconds? Yeah. RTZ. RTZ going for the engagement here, he's in some trouble, out comes the Disco Ball, but it's not gonna matter. CTY, very mobile, double damage rune, taking the fight to the guys from Secret, and they're gonna push into the middle tower, and this one's gonna go down. Oh, big hook shot goes in, throws down the cogs, but nice job by Kirk to get out of it. RTK in some trouble, gets burned down very, very quickly. We see the Crystal Maiden ultimate coming out. CTY taking some damage. S4 wants to go in, catches CTY, is going to get the kill. The Aegis will be popped. Lanham now puts up the ice, the ice on S4. He's going to jump to safety. Zai pops the ultimate, wants to keep fighting. S4 dropping low, he's going to go down. Nice silence from Yang to buy a little bit of time. Zai turns back around, Puppy comes in. Lanham in some trouble, CTY dropping low, but 
he gets away. DDC is going to go down. It is a three-man kill for two, and uh, Secret defends the high ground. Yeah, and they wanted, they really wanted to use the Aegis very, very badly there. That's why the Clockwork decided to hookshot into the tier 3 when there's still a tier 2. And they were forced to, he was forcing his teammates to fight through the Tombstone at a very bad position. So, they were just too confident. They wanted to use the Aegis. That's why they tried to force the fight too much. But, I still think they didn't lose too much because the Aegis was going to expire anyway. And they lost 3 heroes for 2 and they still got the tier 2 in the end of the day. It wasn't all bad news for them. All right, the gold continues to climb in the favor of Ehome, 7,500 XP at 2,000, and they are in, I would say, firm control of this match right now. Yeah, I agree. BKB almost done on our TZ, still a little ways off. Storm Spirit is close to the that's, Orchid, but not quite there yet. Sans Josh yeah, is on the Drow Ranger. That's something you don't see on RTZ a lot. First item, BKB. It shows you how far behind they are, and Absolutely. they're doing a good job warding the Ancients off as well. So Arteezy continues to try and get himself back into this to pick up that BKB to stay relevant. Meanwhile, ROTK, who had a tough start, does have the Vanguard finished up, picked up from Buckler, and is uh, starting to play significantly more aggressively and hitting those hooks, causing a lot of trouble for the guys on the side of Secret. S4 is going to go ahead, grab himself a regen rune, and head towards the bottom lane. Up on top, it looks like Puppy starting to get as much fun, <laughs> trying to get that farm, trying to get those waves pushed back, but the assault is just non-stop as CTY now shows up on lane. He comes I thinks about making a move, but immediately blinks away by CTY. The mobility just too much. S4 starts to push the bottom, and YJ is there waiting for him. Quap TP is into the bottom and immediately chases back S4. So every time that Seeker starts to push the lane, the mobile team that is Ehome seems to have an answer. Uh, the, the Orchid on the Queen of Pain is putting a lot of pressure on the Storm. That's why he has to run every time the Queen of Pain TPs in or the Queen of Pain is not on the map. So it's it's going to limit a lot of what S4 can do. He can't really just jump into the team and try to get any pickoffs because if the Queen of Pain TPs in, he's dead with the Orchid silence on him. Alright, now we Crim are going to see big Crimson rotation. Well. What was that? Crimson Guard as well coming out on the court. Good, very good against Star 9. So Ehome is looking really good now. Uh, even the Chen creeps aren't safe right now. Ehom groups up, heads towards that middle position, looking to keep the pressure going on Secret. And uh, they ping out Puppy as he's in the jungle trying to make something happen, but Dyer is awarding very, very aggressively, making sure they have control of the map, making sure they have vision. We're going to see the invis rune used on CTY as he goes looking for trouble. It looks like Arteezy may be in some trouble here as the entire group is descending upon him. Gonna be a big initiation. We hear the TP, Zai smells it out, wants to get out. Arteezy pops his TP and will be off to safety just as CTY arrives. Yeah, it was a level one hook shot, so he couldn't get in range for the teleporting TA. That was uh, rather unfortunate for them. But they're still gonna be able to push this tier two, I imagine. I still think they're strong enough and Secret wouldn't want to hold a defense here. This is not a good position for them to fight. Incoming! All right, Goldie does continue to climb. We got the BKB finally finished up on our TZ. Drow Ranger, though, almost done with his BKB. So Yang getting pretty relevant. Here we go on the middle. S4 engages with CTY. He's got the back of Ozai. They want to make the chase happen. CTY alone, except ROTK shows up. It's the shot. Not in time to make the save. Cogs come out. Now Zai tries to run. ROTK not interested in disengaging, trying to keep the fight going. But the zombies are there. Puppy is there. Kuroki is there. ROTK is going to go down. Now, Crimson Guard proving valuable. Now Zai sticks around, does get a good heal. Puppy gonna go ahead and throw out that hand of God as Zai tries to get to the high ground to get out of this one. Crystal Maiden gonna throw up that ulti. Is it gonna be enough? YJ dropping pretty low. They finish the job, take him out. Now S4 on Lanham. Lanham trying to run, is gonna have the distance to get away and that will allow them to take this mid tower. Kuroki gets up a ward that was much needed to try and get some control on this map. Agent Apparition gonna throw out the Disco Ball, does catch Zai, will be enough, down he goes. Meanwhile, they're pinging out Kuroki, who's been left alone, goes to TP to safety and will be able to get away. Meanwhile, bottom push is underway as Arteezy pushes all the way up to the tower, but now he has to execute his escape puppy, rotating towards the bottom jungle. Lanham by himself. They go ahead, they get the slow from Arteezy. They want to try to finish him off. We use the rotation by DDC, but what can DDC really do in this situation? There's the disco ball shot from Rubik this time around. They get the kill on the quap. Now they want to make a move on ROTK. He goes down for the second time in a row. And Secret getting right back into this thing. Man, that was a big steal by the Rubik. Otherwise, they wouldn't have been able to get the kill. 
Damn. Didn't realize he got Ice Blast. What a beautiful Ice Blast comes in from the opposite side. This one is going to hit, though. S4 dropping low. Has to be kind of careful about sticking in for too long. But Arteezy wants this tower. Nobody's around to really put a forced contest. And they will finally get this tier 1 mid. Gold was at 7,500 for Ehome. It drops to 2,500. And uh, Secret now takes control of the XP in this match, going past 3. So Secret, refusing to say die, puts together some good moves and gets himself a lot closer to being right back in this match. Yeah, uh, that, that gank on the Queen of Pain started everything. They overextended after that and even losing the tower. And that was a really good ward placed by Kuroki after uh, during the engagement that allowed them to know it's safe to take the tier 1 as well. So very good ward there, enabling to get them to make that play. But all in all, just a really good move by Secret coming back into the game. So the Rosh is just spawned. This actually would be really good for Secret, I think, because they have the bat. They are the dinosaur, and now coming off a one team fight, I think they are in much better position to try and take the rush if they want to. Absolutely. So it seems like Ice Blast is a hard spell to steal as yeah, a Rubik. It is, it is quite hard to steal that spell, I'm not gonna lie. It's really difficult to get that spell. But I think he got it because he was right in front of the A. Mm -hmm. Just now I didn't really catch it how he actually got the spell. But nevertheless, it's a very big spell for Secret to have. Definitely. So he's doing a great job. He does some work with it. Allows him to get the kill. The gold has almost gone back to zero, by the way, after all is said and done. And XP a huge swing into their favor. If we pull up uh, the level charts, you're going to see that Arteezy has been able to pull ahead. He's actually level 15. And uh, Arteezy and Storm Spirit, because of that, have been able to get back into the actual gold race. Drow Ranger was significantly ahead going into that last team fight, but the double on her and the double on the clockwork just put them in a really tough situation. Uh, San Josh yeah. Yeah, TA is desolated now, so Roshan is very easy mm. pickings for Secret if they can find an opportunity to go for it. And this time they have a TA trap, so Ehome wouldn't be able to sneak it uh, without, not without Secret noticing it. Okay, so that is going to... Uh, we do see a smoke bot by Lanham. They're going to gather around the Roshan. It looks like they're going to go in. They get the D-Horn oh, on class. the trap. In they come. The ice ice Blast coming. It's gonna go ahead and pass over, so they see no, it coming. I think he can't hmm. launch it because he timed out. That's why he ah. was only able to shoot it out. Interesting. So yeah, because there was no follow-ups, just flew off the Mac basically. ROTK in there very deep. Arteezy watching from the fringe, waiting for his chance to make a move. Zai gonna join him. There's the hook shot from ROTK. Comes in, cogs out. Zai's gonna jump to the safety. In comes S4. Big leap. Gonna engage all over the place. Dropping low. He's gonna die as the rest of his team was not quite ready for the depth there. Crimson Guard is popped. ROTK is gonna get chain stunned by the Centaurs. And uh, now it's a four versus five here as there is a buyback on the but hasn't used it yet. ROTK dropping pretty low. He's gonna end up dying. Lanham dropping as well. Arteezy looks to want to finish the fight, pops that BKB, DDC, and YJ last inside. Here comes CTY on the return. Arteezy is going to go down. Now it's Zai in awful deep. He ends up dying as well. They want to make the chase on Puppy. He's the last man here in the pit, and he is going to continue to drop. He ends up falling. Four men go down, and Ehome is clear to enter the Roche pit. Uh, that was a really good hook shot from... Uh, ROTK that he was block he block managed to block off the ramp with the power cock so the rest of the team wasn't able to follow up even the storm was he was he jumped in and he got silenced by the draw immediately so he couldn't he couldn't get away and the power with the power cocks blocking the ramp mm. secret was like separated on two ends so they couldn't take a fight after that so is that why is that basically why the storm spirit was completely abandoned there on his engagement he just yeah, couldn't, he, they, they couldn't get past they, the cogs they couldn't get past the cogs and the second reason was they were also really far away from him because he zipped like quite a distance to get the initiation. You know, honestly, I thought that they would. Uh, I thought Secret would come out a little farther ahead on that fight than they did. Yeah, with, with the tombstone on the high ground, they mm -hmm. were definitely having a good position in the fight. So it just did not plan out. Eon played it as well as they could, and they do start to pull that gold a five thousand swing back in their favor after that fight. So Secret uh, fought their way back into this game and then unfortunately a bad engagement on the Roche Pit for them, unfortunately, I should say, uh, ends up not going their way. Eom looking like they are interested in taking this to three and putting a great statement together as to why it should go the distance. Uh, do we get any new items off of that engagement? Mm. It does look like the Eagle Song came out for the Drow Ranger. Ancient Apparition has finished up his Ag Scepter, uh, so that's a good grab for them. He also has picked up a Gem of True Sight and a Glimmer Cape on the Crystal Maiden. 
I wonder what the Queen of Pain is actually gonna get. Is he gonna get Lincoln's? Lincoln's would actually be pretty good against the Storm and the Rubik this game. He has the Perseverance for quite some time already, but hasn't built into anything yet. He's gonna get his level 16 from this, so this would be a really good timing for E Home to strike. Uh, level 3 Sonic Wave with Aegis on the Queen of Pain. And an Aghanim Scepter Ice Blast as well. Now we're gonna see the smoke as they uh, E Home goes in, puts up some wards. Well, where are they gonna looking for a pick off with this smoke to convert into a high ground push? Yeah, more most likely, and yeah. they're gonna steal the the double ancient stacks here as well. All right, so they will take the ancients. A nice little steal for them. Meanwhile, Secret has fallen back onto their base, trying to get some farm. S4 up on the top lane, uh, playing very, very carefully as they don't have any vision right now on where E Home is now. E Home heads towards the mid. Is shown that was a hook shot. Yeah, he got blocked by the Queen of Pain. He wanted to go on the Undying, but the Undying had forced off, so they might not be able to get that kill anyway. Mm. So, it's not the biggest loss. It's like 40 seconds left of cooldowns. Pretty quick for a hook shot. Right, right, so bought, Ehome goes he, to the mid position. Looks like they want to start to push into this high ground. Huh. And they're going to head up. He bought BKB, by the way, Tophis, instead of finishing the Lincolns. Okay. Do you think that's the right call for him? Yeah, definitely. As well. Against the Storm Spirit Orchid. It's something he needs very badly. CTY going to fall backwards with the rest of the team as they put some damage onto that mid tower. Uh, but Secret shows up in force and Ehome not willing to enter that high ground fight just yet. Uh, they, ha they can actually afford to just farm up the map right now. They have map control and it's not going to be easy to for Secret to go out on the map alone right now because Ehome have much better uh, have much better fighting power with the Aegis on the Queen of Pain. They might want to wait it out before they try to run into Ehome again. It's another three, uh, two minutes I think, yeah, one and a half minutes or so before the Aegis expire. Alright, so we're in a nice group here as uh, both teams sticking together trying to figure out what the other is thinking. Secret Knives is going to lose their ancient stacks this time around. They go and farm it up themselves. Gold is still not oh, overwhelmingly in Ehome's favor. Smoke comes out from Secret and they're going to make a rotation looking to get a little something. Meanwhile, Smoke comes out of Ehome. So we've got two smoked groups both searching for a pickoff and uh, essentially going in opposite directions. And the Aegis is like another 30 seconds or so before it expires, so it might be a really good timing for Secret to fight in another 10-15 seconds. Yeah, Alright, so now we're <laughs> staring, not staring at each other, but they are separated by a very small amount of space and both teams look towards each other and then move in the opposite direction, so both smokes uh, should end up not paying off it looks like as they both do expire yeah uh, but Ehome have really good vision over this area so mm -hmm. they have the positional advantage if they want to take a fight there's two wards over the river area so they see everything across the map here so they know what they're going to do they're going to start to push up towards the mid lane they saw everybody on their side of the jungle force out the tps and just like that we see secret start to return to their base uh with absolute necessity as zai comes in to try and slow down the push yj from the low ground is firing at a rapid pace able to really burn down that tower it's already at less than a quarter health and it looks like eom may do a uh the plink strat here and just try to take out that tower a couple shots at a time the Rubik actually got the aura from the draw. Rubik got the he aura. actually works. Really? I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, I did not know you can actually get that spell. What? Hmm. They're actually getting damage, uh, but it's just 15 increased damage. It's not the biggest thing. Hmm. But, but I didn't know you can actually steal that spell. How oh, interesting. So you learn something new every day, Winter. Uh, gold lead, by the way, still sitting at that 5,000. Ehome not been able to extend it as uh, Secret has been trying very hard to sort of keep this farm even. Ehome goes down to the bottom and is going to stick together. Both teams refusing to separate, sticking together as a group. Uh, both worried about the other team's engagement potential. If Secret loses another big team fight like they did at the Roach Pit, is that pretty much me? It's done for them. Yeah, that's why. That's the reason why. Uh... 
everyone is being cautious because if you lose a team fight at this situation, it's going to be if for secret. Obviously, it means that their high ground is going to get breached, and for e home, it's mostly because the storm will be. If you lose a team fight against a storm, it's going to be very difficult the next time because storm will be. A, it's like a very snowball hero. You don't want to lose a big team fight against him, so you have to be really cautious when you go high ground. And it's also that buyback factor with the storm spirit that it's always going to be something at the back of your head when you're sieging against a lineup with the hero. Alright, so as we stare at each other across the map, uh, what's, what's the plan here? What's the plan for Ehome and what's the plan for Secret going forward in the next 5 to 10 minutes? Yeah, obviously, like they want to try and get a pick off, like you mentioned before the last smoke gang. They want to try and get a pick off before they enter the high ground. So they'll be looking to get. Uh, let's check the smoke for Ehome. They still have one in the base and yeah that's their last smoke so they have to use it they either use it to get a pick off soon or they use the smoke when the next roshan is about to spawn in another two minutes so it's gonna be their call when they want to use it it's gonna be important the next smoke because it's gonna be the last one for some time i think before they get another smoke yeah the last smoke before and the cooldown is four four minutes 40 seconds before they get another one all right, that is a, a butterfly up on Yang. I don't think we've talked about that just yet. So uh, if he wasn't difficult to deal with before, he will be now. What other items have we seen come out? They're going to be uh, a big factor in the next fight. Oh, bottom lane. Artesis teleport score is five seconds off cooldown. So they're going to wrap around. They're coming on all sides for him. He's going to blink into the trees. Should be able to buy enough time to get that off of cooldown. They're looking. They're looking everywhere. Artesis. Uh, he's in this. They don't see him. Invis and just gonna hold that TP. Meanwhile, on the top lane, there was a split push going on by S4. Does some damage to Tart, he's about halfway down, and he will run away. So TP now from Arteezy up back to the base. And uh, the standoff continues. Uh, the Roshan is gonna be the next uh, thing for Ehome. They're still waiting for it, and it's at the next three minute timer. So this is what. Okay, I can't read. I can't read this. Is this like thirty seconds or maximum time for the Roche? Let's take a look. It is thirty. No, okay, it's well, immediate. <laughs> it's immediate spawn. So the TA trap is gonna give the intel towards Secret that the Roche is already up. Mm -hmm. Are they gonna smoke and try to go sneak it? Yeah, they will. It looks like it is. So it's a quick go rush. They can scout it out with a rocket flare, so it's not gonna be. But it's going down quick though. They have to scout it out soon. So we are going to see the rock comes in. They now know that it's happening, but Roche already very low. We do see the response by Evo. Here comes the hook shot, big one. Ancient apparition comes in two cheese on the ground. ROTK drops. The initiation too far out front. Now we see S4. He's going to dive into the fight. We see the heal come out from Puppy. Arteezy already dropping low. BKB is pop. He's coming back up in just a second with the Aegis. Can they engage on this? Land, I'm going to go ahead and use the ultimate. S4 wants to come in on him, but he's taking a lot of damage. Has to turn and run. Arteezy also dropping low. S4 is so close. Land, I'm trying to get the kill, but puts him in danger's way. He ends up going down. CTY drops as well. We lost Arteezy, but there's three down on the side of Ehome. Puppy wants DDC. YJ on the run. Kuroki trying to close the distance. Manages to steal the silence. And uh, it looks like Ancient Apparition Disco Ball is going to come out to try and slow them down. And the last two remaining players from Ehome will manage to get to safety so secret comes away they lose the ages they only lose one though a good engagement for them in the rush pit the rubik got queen of pain ultimate and he had agony scepter <laughs> oh my he, he, he landed the sonic wave on three heroes there the rubik jeez stole the stole the stole the wave then stole the silence he's uh kuroki's just too good at that hero he's the grand magus he really is YJ already rotating back around. Looks like he could run into some trouble here. Zai is going to come to the high ground spots and Glimmerclate comes out to give the engagement. And uh, he makes the chase, but won't close the time. S4, though, is there to stall. They catch YJ. He's going to go down. ROTK comes in to help, but maybe too a little too late. Now he's on the run, puts up the Crimson Guard, but it's not going to be enough. He is cut off, and he's going to throw out the cogs, but he goes down. And that's a double kill that's massive for Team Secret. Yeah, that was a cute little play there, the Chen stealing the the draw creep with the Centaur to stun him. <laughs> that was interesting. And Rubik is going to have uh, Aghanim Scepter hookshot right now. It's going to be fun. It's not the <laughs> spell you want to have because you don't want to go near your opponents, but it's going to be really nice to lock down the Queen of Pain or the Draw Ranger from a far distance. 
Gold lead is back to zero, by the way. XP is once again back in Secret's favor after that engagement, and they have the kill count uh, as well, as well as some extra towers they can pick up to put themselves farther into gold lead. Does this mean the Secret's right back into this right now, or are they still struggling to catch back up? Because it felt like a couple of minutes ago they were almost out of this game completely. Uh, yeah, I feel they are stronger right now because the Storm is already getting out of control. He completes the Shiva, so he's mm -hmm. really tough to bring down, and... Super late game situation, draw Queen of Pain against the uh, TA and Storm, I, I would put my money on the Storm and the TA to be much stronger. A lot more... They have a lot more potential because they are more mobile than the Draw Ranger. All right, so Secret really starting to come alive here. Never say die attitude showing itself. Ehome gathers up his five and heads down the middle. Do you feel like Ehome has a sense that the clock has started to tick on them? Yeah, I think so, because the Storm... You don't want to go into super ultra late game against a storm. It's very, very troublesome to go up against. So they want to try at least get a set of racks here with the Dranger. They might actually pop, just pop BKBs to take. No, they're not really Dyer's confident already. They just want to back off. Attack. Not willing to take this, the loss that they took in the last fight. If it happens oh, again, that guarantees that they fall behind. Hex stick, that nice grab. He sold his. Uh, he, he sold the ring of protection to get it. All right, so CTY looking like he wants to make the go in here. Arteezy a little bit far out, feeling pretty confident at the moment. Desolator and Demon Edge up and ready to go. Seven seconds left on that BKB if he chooses to use it. And we do see Eom fall back to that high ground above the Roche Pit. Buyback Again. is an important thing to have right now. Yeah. So TA, TA does have buyback, but Storm doesn't have the buyback. Arguably the most important buyback to have on the secret side. So yeah, both teams looking like they're not willing to take the engagement just yet as they uh, both go out and try to get those buybacks up and ready. Chen need, Army looking pretty vicious. Uh, they need MKB on the draw against the Solar Crest. Mm. This is a problem. This is a huge problem, the Solar Crest. She is sitting at 1300 gold, so not really going to happen anytime soon. Yeah, that's a big problem for sure. Mm. Alright, so Secret making uh, one hell of a comeback. So. When you look at it, is Secret now in charge of this game, or is Ehome I think Secret, still in God mode? It feels like Secret's really taking yeah, over. I think Secret is already taking over. If you look at the goal, it doesn't say much, but mm -hmm. I, I'm just saying this based on like lineup and potential, because Storm has more potential than the draw in this sort of game. <laughs> that was a big jump I asked for. Yeah, they just stand back and use the Storm Ball Lightning to clear out the creep wave. So mm -hmm. they know Ehome is desperate to get something done with the Draw Ranger right now. Going into, they don't want to go into like a 60 minute game against the Storm. It's, it's very, it's very risky. So mm -hmm. Secret knows that, and they're just trying to delay the push as much as possible and wait for the next ages if if they can actually get it on the Storm. I think the game would probably be most likely won by Secret if they can get a ages on the Storm. S4 feeling pretty good right now. He's uh, yeah, getting he a, way out of control. He has buyback now, so this is uh, the period of the game where Secret, I, I would say they are very much in control of the situation as long as they don't try to push and fight far away from their base and it will allow them to utilize the Storm buyback. I think they would, could just take any fight near their base and even in the Roche Pit and they, they just win with the buyback from the Storm. All right, so we see a smoke come out from Eom as they're looking to get something done here. Uh, buyback's up on half of the folks in here. Now that is going to be an Ag Scepter purchased on Chen. ROTK looking to try and get that hook on someone. They're putting out some good wars, gaining themselves some much-needed vision. I feel like uh, Eom has a great vision to start and has recently just sort of lost control of this map in terms of being aggressive. So a good aggressive ward coming out from them to try and let them regain control. Meanwhile, smoke going to be used by Secret on the bottom lane as they choose to rotate around. They've got the the same idea and they're going to come right down towards Ehome whose smoke has ended. So they have the engage advantage. Nope, it's taken out. Here comes the fight. The ROTK comes in. Going to move on Zyre right away. BKBs are popped all over the place. S4 in there putting in some serious work. They want YJ. Good scream. Going to start to drop everybody pretty low. Cogs come out and the fight is all over the place. We're going to join the main contract here. RTZ drops down. Very quickly S4 wants to fight. ROTK gets Crimson Guard up. He may survive because they had to get out. No, he doesn't. Crystal Main Ultimate putting in some serious work. So out secret secret happy to wait for it to end in comes Kuroki stole the scream takes out one wants YJ YJ running for safety tries to in the trees pops the TP will he get away he does and secret comes oh. away losing our TZ but they pick Again, off too the sonic wave 
came into a big Sonic play. Sonic Wave's so good. He, the thing is, because he had the Agadim, so can his wave is better than the Queen of Pain Sonic Waves. Hmm. That's it. It was uh, so they lose Arteezy and, and the Clockwork and the CM. Who who comes out ahead on that? I think more or less even because the Clockwork at this point is more mm -hmm. like a support because the AA with the Midas has transitioned into the core. So losing the CM and the Clock means that like, you lost two supports and you traded it for a big hero on Secret Side. So it was uh, interesting to watch that fight. BKBs all popped, and it was sort of like this weird stalemate. Nobody searched for positioning while the BKBs ran yeah, down. Yeah, once the BKBs actually run down, I would say the CM, the CM and the AS effect will become stronger and stronger mm -hmm. as the BKBs run down. We see four staff picked up by the Rubik, four staff picked up by the CM at the exact same time. Everyone is going to head back to base, refill their mana, refill their health, get ready to head back out there. Buybacks are still there's only two up, but everybody else is getting very very close. To be honest, for base, they need to deal with the Rubik <laughs> yeah. in, to, before they start dealing with other heroes, otherwise he's going to just do so much. The last two fights, he, he dealt so much damage with the stolen mm -hmm. Sonic Wave. Well, it's, it's interesting, right? Because I guess Rubik isn't always that big of a problem, but in the hands of Kuroki, who is playing this out of his mind right now, it's a huge liability. He's oh, just here been, we go again. Here, here we go. Big engagement. They're going to come in. ROTK does see them. And uh, the engagement backs off. Secret smartly not willing to go to the high ground on that. I'm gonna go ahead and send in a Chen creep. It's gonna see what's up there, but end up going down. And Secret looks like they're just gonna go back to their jungle. Pain without consequence. So the rush is like, okay, I can't read this timer. You have to help. It's me. gonna be. Uh, we haven't quite figured out. We gotta wait for it to hit that mark before we know for sure. And now Eom's gonna rotate around. Looks like they want to go on the middle position. S4 and. Arteezy getting the push, blinks to safety, S4 gets silenced with the X. He could be in some trouble here as they surround him on all sides, jumps up, pops the BKB though, and will zip to safety. We'll check in with Roche real quick, he's back up and running. So this, this Roche has been very short. Yeah, this is uh, one with Cheese, so this, whoever gets this one will see a very big uh, lead in the current state of the game. And I would, I would say if Storm gets like, I, I still stand by my point where if Storm gets the Aegis, I think they win the game already. So Ehom knows it's really important that they secure this. And it looks it's like half HP. It's dropping very fast. It looks like he's just going to have what it takes to come in there and stop it. So, uh, but we may see a move. Oh, they saw the sandbag. They saw the sandbag. So they know it's free for them to take the Aegis. Oh, oh no. So they do get it. They get the cheese as well. A Drow Ranger going to pick up the Aegis. Who'd the cheese go to? It went to CTY. And uh, they are in a much better position than they were a couple of minutes ago. Size got that Glimmer Cape up. We go ahead and find ROTK. Pops the ultimate. S4 is there. ROTK is in trouble. CTY jumps in. Tombstone is down. S4 has to back away. There's the screen. Putting in some work. We do get the cogs up. Zai wants to fight. Heals himself. They're going to force Staff away to safety. Zai isolated alone. He will go down. It's a good pickoff for them. They do have the buyback on the Undying as uh, they can continue. Consider going to high ground. Aegis online, ready to go. Uh, they're gonna maybe try. No, Chen is out. I thought they were gonna try and send back the storm again and to take out one set of creep waves to slow down the push. But Ehome is gonna have a creep wave and gonna go right on the racks here. So Ehome comes in. YJ putting on some damage for that melee rack, starting to burn it down very, very quickly. In comes the jump from S4. Wants to go. Cogs come out right away. Lanham dropping low but gets healed up. S4 pops the BKB, makes the moves. ROTK getting low. CTY getting low as well. Can they finish the job? That's one. That's two. That is three. But the Aegis is gonna bring back up the drought. He's going to come back in the fight, but everyone is standing around. Here comes CTY, wants to get engaged. They've already lost three who are not coming back. Right, he's going to get hit with the Hex. CTY trying to help, but he can't. YJ isolated and alone is going to end up going down. It's a four-man wipe in favor of Secret. The push was not the right plan as Secret comes out ahead on a wonderful turnaround to get four for the price of one. And an Aegis. They and they use a buyback on the Undying as well. So they use the cheese too. Man, Secret just won the fight against Ehome with Aegis and Cheese. Uh, well, that's, now, that's pretty amazing. And Storm yeah. didn't even use his buyback yet. Storm still has buyback if he if he wants to, but oh, he doesn't have enough for a boost of travel, so he's not going to buy back. Now Arteez is going to start heading towards the high ground. They picked up that tier 2, start to lean onto this tower. We got the buyback from the A, but Drow not able to re-engage, so Arteez should be able to take this tower without too much trouble. We just see the cold feet come out, Arteez going to stick around. No, he does get the send back, so the tower will remain standing with 136 HP.
Those ice armor clips are also really helpful from Chen. Mm. Poppy has the boss mage as well to help out against the draw ranger physical damage. That's like a very good clip to have at this stage of the game. So that gold chart, that XP chart, keep going up and down, up and down, but they are in Secret's favor now, 2,500 again uh, to Secret, and the XP for Secret is incredibly high at 12,000. So uh, they are pulling ahead in their level position. The net worth on the Drow is number one, but that TA not far behind. Arteezy, actually, he takes over the number one position as I say that, and uh, Secret continues to make these massive turnarounds. You think they're in trouble, you think that that Aegis was going to give Ehome the edge, and somehow Secret not only gets the Aegis back, but comes away with a massive advantage in that fight. Yeah, they were able to, the most important part was the Storm was able to zip even with the TA and they, they killed the first target they were focusing. So even if you have Aegis, like the Drow did, he, but they already lost like three heroes when he was respawning with Aegis. So it doesn't mm -hmm. matter if you have Aegis or not when all your teammates are already dead. So Seeker did the right thing, they focused the heroes with the other heroes apart from the draw with the Aegis, they killed all his teammates and he was the last one with the Queen of Pain left. So even with the Aegis, they couldn't do much with that. And now we go back to our five-man groupings as both teams playing very carefully at this point. Secret with the advantage right now, not willing to give it up. And they are going to group up here as a team, get the heal, and immediately move out. Smoke is going to be popped as they head towards that middle lane, Arteezy out in front. Disco Ball is going to come out to get the creeps. Ends up catching almost everybody on Team Secret. So a nice blind shot on the Ancient Apparition Ultimate. Big item pick up. The Refresher with the Hex and Double Sonic Wave. Double BKB. This is big. Ehom is strong now. They have a chance to win the fight. If they get a Hex on the key target, and they're going to be looking to do that. We're going to see the smoke walk away. A secret did not get the engagement they wanted. They are going to retreat. And uh, Ehom going to do the exact opposite as they gather up five. That refresher orb, like you said, going to make CTY very, very strong in the next fight. They should have seen it, so it won't be a surprise. How do you defend against that? Um, the Rubik, if the Rubik can steal, because if you're casting two Sonic Waves, I think there's an even better chance for the Rubik to get the waves, I'd say. That is, so he has to be true. really, yeah, he has to be really careful of not giving. I think the best way is probably you blink, you wave, and you 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 have to scream immediately. Mm -hmm. Whether or not if, if your scream is gonna hit anyone, you just have to prevent the Rubik from stealing the Sonic wave. I think that's like the best way to play right now for the Queen of Pain for CTY. Basically, keep that out of. Uh, Kuroki's hands because he has been outrageously strong on that steal. Uh, Goldie still continues to be in Secret's favor by about 5,000. XP is at 12. And uh, Secret, if they can survive the refresher initiation of Quap, looks like they're in a good spot to push down and uh, start to really put the screws to Eho. Yeah, and Secret even have two gems on their side against uh, the Glimmer Cape because if you think about how they're going to initiate, the Storm is going to jump in and the TA with the Dagger as well is going to jump in to try and focus the target. So, having the gem means they don't have to worry about Crystal Maiden's Grim Glimmer Keep to make sure whoever they are focusing is going to get out alive. So, it's really important to have the true slide now, guys, with, with Glimmer Keep around. That item is just really so strong with the price you have to pay for it. All right, so now we wait for the pause to. Uh get figured out what's going on here no chat since they are on site so we will just have to wait and see yeah, what no, is going nothing, on nothing they didn't say anything but like you like you talk about before if there's no pause that's not a dota game so <laughs> you have to bear with it <laughs> You finding out what's going on? <laughs> Trying to figure it out, but uh, not seeing anything as we did see now. ROTK going to disconnect from the game, so might be some connection issues or a computer having a problem on site as we uh, wait to get this thing figured out. So we'll give it a second or two, and then uh, if we don't see a change in the next couple of seconds, what we'll probably do is just go ahead and uh, put on the away while we figure this one out. But uh, what do you think of the game so far? Now that we have a second to breathe, uh, 
has it gone the way that you expected it to? I mean, Secret's been been scrappy and keeping themselves in this, but Ehome has been, with the exception of a couple of positioning issues, seems like they're playing this fairly well. Yeah, but Secret, I think, is still very much in control of the game right now because they have, uh, I mean, the buyback storm is something that's in late game is what's going to win you a team fight and ultimately win you the game. So I would say Secret is still very much in the driving seat right now. And Ehome has to play very, very careful. I would say the the odds are probably 70-30 or even 80-20 in favor of Secret right now with the game going into the late, super late game scenario. So Secret are much more comfortable in this situation. Secret does, and, and this seems to be where they thrive. They uh, they like to get out early in front, but they don't balk at the ability to try and make that comeback yeah. when they're behind. The draw without the MKB is just... he's. If you notice, notice in the last couple of fights, he isn't able to kill the target that he's focusing because of the Solar Crest and him not having an MKB. It's a really huge problem, and he's nowhere near it, so it's going to be a problem until maybe even the end of the game. All right, so uh, we're waiting for to figure out what's going on with ROTK, and uh, just gonna sit and wait for this one to develop. I mean, it's felt like we've been in a sit and waiting game for a little while here. It's these these long breaks con followed by these uh, huge engagements that no one seems to be really coming out that far ahead on, with the exception of that last fight we saw in the mid lane on the high ground. Uh, they just seem to be really going back and forth. Yeah, but you remember how the game started? e home uh, in a very comfortable p position, I would say, around 15, 20, 25 minute mark, and a couple of over extensions, and they were in a much worse spot. Like now, I didn't expect the game to be so hard for them. I thought they would be able to pull through, but it turned into a really huge slugfest, like both sides winning fights uh, one after the other. And right now, Ehome is in a very, very dangerous and precarious spot. Because I, I would say the only way they can win a team fight, and their best bet is the Refresher on the Queen of Pain. If she's mm. going to be able to kill either the TA or the Storm, but they have to worry about the sandbag from Chen, which has been on point so far. Mm. So it's going to be really difficult to burst someone down before the sandbag occurs, and you have to worry at the same time or about not giving away your Sonic Wave to the Rubik, which has happened like at least twice or three times this game. Yeah, easily. And every time he's done it, it's been at least three heroes are getting caught inside of it uh, as K-God comes in and just opens hell, basically. So, uh, a lot to see. Been an interesting game so far. It looks like ROTK has reconnected, so maybe... There it is. We are... Uh, Secret RTC says he's ready to get this thing back underway, so hopefully we can uh, get started. And the game unpausing. Let's do this as we look to see who's going to come out. E-Home obviously waiting... In a tough position, they have to win this game or they are out of the tournament. Secret uh, in a little bit more of a comfortable spot. They're struggling to keep up. They've had to make a comeback a few times in this game. But if they lose, it doesn't mean the end for them. We go to game three. So Secret does have the ability to play a little uh, more aggressively, I guess is probably the way to put it. Yeah, and if you look at the buybacks right now, Secret has more buybacks than uh, Ehome. Ehome has only one buyback on the draw, and Secret has the Rubik and the Storm buyback. So uh, I would say Secret are feeling, again, much more comfortable in this situation. Obviously, they wouldn't know how many buybacks the Ehome side have. We, we as the observers, are the only ones having the <laughs> privilege about that. That is true. So let's take a quick look at that uh, buyback count, as we said, and... Uh, not too Radiant's long, two minutes left on the Ancient Apparition, attack. two on Dirge, so uh, all the heroes that are going to be really relevant to get these big buybacks in are pretty close yeah. to farming it up. The key one for e will be the Queen of Pain and the Drow, obviously, the two big heroes. And for Secret is also the T and the Storm, and as it stands right now, Secret have the buyback on the Storm and the T and only the Drow on the e -home side, so e -home will be more nervous to take a fight anytime soon. Oh, Roche, uh, Roche is in about, okay, this is still the, <laughs> this is still the 3 minute from the Aegis expiration, so it's, an, yep. it's like, it starts spawning at 53, and after that it's a random time, mm -hmm. between 53 to 56. Mm -hmm. So did I got it right this time? <laughs> yep, absolutely. And then, so once it gets to that 53, then it'll actually show you what the respawn time is on the clock. All right, so Zai down on the bottom lane, <laughs> making a nice push with the ancient granite golems of uh, Puppy starting to tear through this lane, making sure that it stays pushed out. Let's go to the opposite side where ROTK, looking to find somebody, is going to get spotted. TA starting to put those wards down all over the map to keep a little bit of vision up. 
uh, gems on both sides, Zai carrying it on the Undying, Ancient Apparition carrying it for Ehome. We do see a rotation now towards the bottom. Ehom going to group back up as five as they look to head down towards the bottom and make a push happen. Meanwhile, on the top, Arteezy, uh, been the king of the split in the games that we've watched recently, continues to do it on his own. And Rubik gets a blink now. This is going to be an item that will allow him to be even much more scary in the team fights because he don't have to stand near the fights anymore now. And with the BKBs like, at five seconds on secret side, they have to be really careful against the Crystal Maiden ultimate as well. If the team fights gets dragged out for a long time and the BKBs run out, they need to be very careful about that. We're going to see a move down the mid lane coming from Secret as they move into their opponent's jungle looking to get a pick and then hopefully uh, achieve an objective here. Again though, Ehom continuing to stay stacked up as they farm the jungle. Look for those buybacks. Buybacks now up on pretty much everybody who is going to need it in the next fight. So the engagement can happen at this point. Going over to the Roche, checking in. It looks like we are going to have a quick Roche here, less than a minute until uh, that spawn comes back up. Man, every rush is like so quick in this game. Meanwhile, we're going to see the bottom lane pushing. Creeps get in there. S4 and Arteezy going to head back and farm it up real quick. Arteezy continues the uh, split push aggression with those boots of travel. He's got the Monkey King bar. He's got the Chrysalis. And we'll continue to just tear through these creep waves and keep the pressure on, forcing Ehome uh, to watch those lanes. There's a Lotus up on the Undying. So this would be actually important against the Hex from the Queen of Pain. This is going to be an item that the Queen of Pain has to be very careful. She has to pop her BKB before she starts mm -hmm. to use the Hex. And the Roche is going to be much more favorable for Secret because they have a trap and a uh, creep inside so they would know when the creep, uh, when the Roshan comes up. Now they're going to lead out. They go right past the Roche pit. Crimson Guard already on as ROTK looks for someone to take out. But Secret is gathered up in their home base. Yeah. Arteezy hiding in the trees. So this smoke, not going to get much. But as they go past the Roche pit, they should be able to see him respawn. There it is. So they are going to oh, be in there okay. when the respawn happens. And they say, oh, well, I guess we'll just go ahead and do that. Did so, they actually see the Roshan respawn? Oh. Yeah, they were standing in the base and responding. Oh, S4 jumps in, gets held back right away, does some harassment. Now they know that they have a free Roche to push down here. Uh, yeah, it was just very fortuitous. They were actually planning on backing out of the pit, I think, uh, and Roche spawned on top of them as they were exiting. Wow, that was like two times he was... Oh, RTZ is going to try to take out a range track here. He's going to force out a glyph at the very least. So a nice glyph force as he backs away. We do see a rotation by Ehome as they come in. Got to stop that Arteezy split push. And he says, oh, I'll get your Ancients on the way out. Exit and fee. E Ehome really saved save the game for themselves. If they didn't get the Aegis and the Roshan didn't spawn quick enough and they weren't just about there when the Roche spawns, it would be in secret Roshan for sure. But they managed to snag the Roshan twice and it's going to prolong the game for them. Absolutely, absolutely. So, a little bit of luck, a little bit of skill as they go in and get that. Arteezy uh, playing pretty aggressively here, up out in front, doesn't have a lot of backup. Ehome doesn't know that. Uh, comes in, clears the wave, and blinks away to safety. Yeah. S4 going to go ahead and keep farming their opponent's jungle. So they're doing everything they can to try and keep Ehome from sort of just camping in there and getting as much farm as they can. And Draw has enough cash for the MKB. I did see that. So he's got 5.6 on the opposite side. Arteezy is sitting on 4.2 in his bank. Uh, so both sides starting to really stack up on the gold. Let's pull up that net worth just so you can take a look at the stack. TA still out in front, but the uh, Quap and the Drow not far behind. Uh, oh. Hookshot. Casual hookshot, I would say. They're not going <laughs> to do much with this hookshot. His team is already all the way out. So casual hookshot, throws some cogs, and just walks away. Gold lead at about 8,000 for Team Secret. XP at 12, as uh, they seem to be in a pretty good position, but obviously less towers in their possession. They do have to play pretty safely because okay. Ehome trying to take the aggression to them. They've got the Aegis. They want to go for it. Cheese on CTY. They take out the creep wave. This could be the push to high ground. Last time it did not go well for them. Let's see how it plays out this time around. The Clawworks sold his uh, Crimson God for the Aghanim Scepter, by the way. Mm, I did not. Okay, so in they come. YJ tearing into the range racks. Already going to drop very, very low. Glyph going to be popped. ROTK comes back in. That's going to be a steal for Rubik. He managed to get his hands on the rocket flare. YJ tearing through the tower, tearing through those racks. Look how quickly he's just putting out that damage. And they're going to try to finish it, but in they come. CTY playing the protection game. YJ very low, but got the Aegis. Not afraid to go down. And Secret just can't fight into it. Well, what did they lose on the career? It's 5.6k. 
Whoa, I don't know what they lost. Here comes the jump in, though. And oh, Storm Spirit waits for it. Look how low they got YJ. So they are going to go ahead and get the Aegis out. And immediately they fade away. BKB pops on the CTY. Look at their base. Toffees. They lost the Rex. RTZ took the Rex. RTZ took the... Wow, I didn't realize RTZ took the Rex. How the hell did I miss that? He does it, and then he goes to the bottom lane. And Ehome has to fall backwards. So they go Rex for Rex. It's one for one Rex, and... <laughs> wow, so while we were all watching going, why isn't Secret engaging on this? It was because Arteezy was in the middle doing some work. And if you check on the career, there was actually a Titanic in the career. With power traits, magic wand. Wow. It was a, it was a huge career. Big career, Rax lost, Rateezy doing a good job, and me failing miserably on catching that with the camera. I actually didn't even notice right until the end, but <laughs> I, was, yeah, I didn't. I, I didn't see it as well because I was three. Really so that's on that's how that's how well Ratizi executed it. Is he uh, slipped in even under our radar as the Golden continues to go in Secret's favor, and even with the Aegis push coming from Eom, uh, Secret seems to find a way to make these fights trade out evenly. Uh, I was quite surprised he went for the Satanic though. I mean, really needs the MKB very badly. Uh, not sure though. But the Satanic would give him a lot of sustain, obviously. There's still yeah, there's still the merits of getting a Satanic, but I still feel he needs the true strike very, very badly. Against the Solar Crest. Alright, so just waiting for Secret to make their move. What are they waiting for? What are they gonna put together before they actually take the assault? They're gonna continue to let Eom sort of bring the fight to them, or is it time for them to gather up and take the fight uh, to Eom? Let's check. You just need to check the buyback status first. Uh, so they have five buybacks on mm -hmm. Secret. And if they wanna play it safe, they wait for the Roshan again. Like it's gonna take another three, four minutes mm -hmm. to spawn. But if they wanna go now. Mm, they have buyback plus boots of travel. Oh, actually he doesn't. I think he has enough of for the boots of travel on the storm if he buys back and sells his power trade. So they have buyback on RTZ and the storm. That's the most important part with the boots of travel. We're gonna do a job so, clearing out the creep waves. The uh, it's send back it's the, the it's the matter of fact when they feel it's like the less risk to do so. Mm -hmm. I would say. So they'll keep the waves pushed up, keep gathered up, Secret waiting for their chance to possibly go in. Ehome forced to stay together, can't really split up because when they do, they either get picked off or they uh, have Rateezy come through and just start to tear them apart. So immediately he TPs back out. They're going to go towards mid position and now it is going to be an immediate smoke and a push right down the mid lane. Looking for some action, Rateezy out in front, uh, thirsty for blood. Hoping to fight it, they're gonna fight ROTK in a tough position. Nice hook shot, stuns RTZ, and he actually may get away. Now RTZ goes for the jump in, forces DDC backwards, and the fight will sort of commence as uh, it's a little bit of harassment and zoning. Meanwhile, go back to the mid lane where Sport jumps in on ROTK. CTY's got the BKB popped. Sport's gotta watch out. CTY now on the run and uh, dropping very, very low. Sport bouncing all over the place, putting out a lot of damage. He's gonna get the Crystal Maiden. YJ pops his BKB, wants to. Engage comes in Arteezy, hook shots out, hits the creeps. ROTK from behind. S4 is going to go down, comes in, puts the cobs up on Puppy. ROTK still dropping very low. Good play. Queen of Paint is going to drop down, and it's going to be a three for three as both teams start to withdraw. But Arteezy still online, still interested in making this fight happen. Uh, so so much to even. Now they catch YJ. YJ's got to be on the run. Zai is there. Arteezy gets him. That's a huge kill. Buyback now on the Crystal Maiden. They're going to force in. They want to get DDC. And now they see the buyback on the clockwork and are not willing to stick around. So Arteezy's going to fall backwards just a little bit. Going to go with Zai. And they will back off to safety. Oh, damn. Hookshot Missed misses. the hookshot on the TA. That would have been huge. Oh, dear. That was a very, very important kill to have. Mm. At least they can maybe force the buyback on the TA. But TA escapes and... They used two buybacks on the Crystal mm -hmm. Maiden and the Clockwork, and they lost four heroes before that. So Secret definitely yeah. coming out on top out so of that fight. Definitely comes out on top of that exchange, especially because RTZ was able to survive. A lot of chaos fight all over the map. I'm not sure. Did uh, Kroki get his hands on the, on the nah, ultimate again? He, he had a hook shot that mm -hmm. fight. And the other thing major that happened was because the Queen of Pain got really low from the first fight, uh, from the start of the fight, and CM was. Oh, they're gonna fight the top. They're gonna find the fight. ROTK comes in. Zai and Arteezy want to go for the chase. Lana goes to the high ground, pops his ultimate, but Zai gets up there with the four staff, finds him and starts to burn him down. Gets a good kill on the Crystal Maiden. Interesting engagement there coming out of Eho. Uh, they probably were trying to find a, a pick off there, but they ran into two heroes and mm -hmm. 
Now the CM ha is on a dieback, but in that the last fight, the Queen of Pain, he was forced to use Refresher just for the BKB, so he didn't drop two Sonic Wave in the last fight. He only dropped one Sonic Wave with the Refresher. So that was some. That was like a lot of missed damage on yeah. the E-Home side. Yeah, all right, and Refresher down for the 84 seconds. As she is up and walking around, all of Secret has respawned, and uh, they came out ahead on that fight. Their Goldie jumps up to 10,000 at this point, XP at 10 as well. Is that really at 62 minutes in the game? How relevant are those leads? Mm, not, not really relevant. Exactly. It's, it means a lot less if you have a 10,000 goalie at let's say 15, 20, 25 minutes compared to a 60 minute game. Because if you look at the heroes like Storm, uh, I mean, mainly TA at the moment. TA is like 4.3k and already six slotted, so she can't exactly use the go to have an extra item apart from a buyback. And obviously she already used Moonshots, I didn't even realize that she already has Moonshots. Hmm. So the, the only thing left is maybe to get a new item instead of a Blink, but I think Blink is really important on TA. And the second last would be the upgraded boost of travel, so that's about hmm. it. Alright, so at this point in the game, we talked about the sort of late game advantage. Top you said lane, top that, lane. CTY. Oh. Looks like CTY gonna get engaged on. Nice hook from ROTK, comes from the outside. Tries to help out CTY, ROTK gonna go for safety. DDC puts up the Disco Ball, he's now being chased. We saw RTZ pop the BKP to buy a little bit of space. S4 wants to come after him, DDC is gonna go down. That's a double kill for Secret, a huge engagement. ROTK came in to help, but it just wasn't enough. He is going to go ahead, gets the hook shot, goes in for Arteezy, but it was just sort of a space creation cog, and uh, takes some damage for his trouble. They're going to be able to force the buyback on that co-op. Yeah, he just tried to stop Arteezy's stuff. Arteezy was trying to go towards bottom to try and push. But he gotcha. cancelled the TP with the hook shot, and now Secret, like you mentioned, I'm going to try and force the buyback from the Queen of Pain. And I think they are most likely going to be able to be successful here. There's a creep wave coming in top. The tower is less than half, so... They have to buy that. RTK is going to come out, gets the hook shot on RTZ, immediately pulled out with that four staff. RTZ is going to stick around. CTY comes in. S4 is going to get X. He could be in some trouble, dropping pretty low. Going to go down. Good kill on him. We got the double buyback out of the co-op in the AA. RTZ goes for the TP. Can he escape? He does. The hook shot doesn't connect in time. So RTZ will manage to escape. Zai with the Glimmer Clay, trying to get as far as he can. And uh, not going to happen as everybody closes in around him. He buys some space, but it's not going to be enough. Zai will <laughs> go down after quite the fight. And uh, it looks like Ehome gonna try to capitalize Damn. on this. He almost hit the hookshot on the Rubik. The quad blink over to and accidentally blocked the hookshot. And Rubik has Sonic Wave once again. Once again. Kuroki, the king of the Sonic Wave steal. Arteezy back to the mid lane, gonna get the push going. Roche <laughs> gonna spot in about 15 seconds, and Ehome looks like they're gonna find it. Yeah, who's that? whose side is the Queen of Pain on anyway? <laughs> right. So here this comes is, the... Um, this is a maximum time. Oh no. Again, it's spawn again. <laughs> yep. Again, it's a quick spawn. It's really good for Eho. Man, this Roshan spawns. It, it, this Rosh these Roshan spawns have been absolutely phenomenal for Eho. It's as, as good as they can possibly uh, be. By the way, Drow has a piece of blade. <laughs> wow. I did not expect that at all, but yeah, it's a good thing. Well, Arteezy goes to the top, top lane and uh, takes out the tower. Hookshot's Hook oh. gonna come through, but it's not gonna connect. Arteezy invisible, so he shoots to the wrong spot, turns what? around, <laughs> rips ROTK apart. CTY continues to put out the damage. Arteezy gonna go ahead and hide in the trees. Can CTY yeah, can't go into this? Meanwhile, yeah, rotation no coming side. in from YJ. Uh-oh. More rotation. S4 comes in. Lots of speed. Ends up taking out the co-op. They pop the Aegis. And now they will escape. There goes the Aegis. Wow. Nice just Aegis like out, but what a shot by RTZ to ROTK. We just had no chance. Brutal. And that was a huge play there from RTZ. And it resulted in not only the, RT, uh, the clockwork dying, but the Aegis on the Queen of Pain getting expanded because he was trying to help the clock out. Yeah, that lack of vision, man. Do they even have a gem? Oh, they have a gem on the CM, but not on, on the other CM, heroes. Yeah. This is the reason why you have uh, on Secret side before that, they have two gems just against the Glimmer Cape. 
All right, so Puppy and Kuroki going into the jungle. Meanwhile, Arteezy pushing the split constantly at top lane straight to bottom lane S4, and Arteezy gonna go ahead and push those creeps in, hit yeah. this bottom tower pretty hard, already dropping a low. Arteezy comes in, this decides it's not worth sticking around. This is really bad. They can even, you know, like send the TA back and the TA blinks in. Okay, they're gonna go on a hex. They want to make the move, they go on Arteezy, Arteezy gets four staff back to safety, BKBs are popped all around. In comes S4, wants to must TTY, TTY gets thrown to safety, but is it going to be far enough? Gets to the static swing, Lanham dropping low as well, S4 is going to have to go back out, Zai comes in, pops his ultimate, Crystal Maiden going to use hers, everybody backs away, says they let it run the distance. S4 going to jump and get called back as ROTK re-engages, Zai left alone again, he is going to go down. Puppy in some trouble as the hookshot connects, picks him up, throws him outside the cog. Stolen cogs for Kuroki to buy a little bit of space. ROTK separated from his friends. Arteezy fighting in, gets the each nap race with the hook from behind. He's gonna go down. He's gonna buy back immediately. YJ in some trouble. Kuroki comes in, doing a lot of damage. Down he goes. That's one, that's two. Holy cow, they get five, and now we get a double buyback from Crystal Maiden in the drow. They're gonna try to fight into this, but what can they do? There's no buyback on the quap, only on the clockwork. Rax in some serious trouble. We're gonna lose the melee. The GG comes out, and Secret takes game two. Secret, who I thought was going to lose this one early on, fights back and shows us just how tenacious they actually are. Yeah, this was the first game I think we casted that Secret were actually behind from the early to mid game and they were still able to put, I think if it was other team in this put in the same situation that Secret had in this game, it would probably have been a different result, but because Secret played really well from the mid stage onwards and late game, obviously the Storm. I mean, Storm late game with mm -hmm. a chance and back and boost